G'day, I'm Jonathan King. I'm the Greens candidate for McKellar. And I'm standing because I really love Australia and I've always had a really deep passion for its history. But today, I want to share with you my green vision for the future of McKellar and also Australia as part of a sustainable world. Because we have to think globally but act locally in order to preserve this planet for future generations. The United Nations General Assembly has already proclaimed this the decade of education for sustainable development. Now, the Greens have got to get the balance of power in the Senate if we're going to achieve that sustainability. This year, the economics professor, Tim Jackson, from Europe's Sustainable Development Commission, has published a book called Prosperity Without Growth. Now, most of us have been brought up to believe that we must have growth progress at all costs but we now are now aware that the planet is finite and we have to achieve that growth without upsetting the natural environment that sustains us. Professor Jackson outlines 12 key points in achieving this sustainability. Developing macroeconomic capabilities, investing in job assets and infrastructure, increasing financial and fiscal prudence, improving macroeconomic accounting, sharing the work and improving the work-life balance, tackling systemic inequality, measuring prosperity, strengthening human and social capital, reversing the culture of consumerism, imposing clearly defined resource emission caps, fiscal reform for sustainability, and finally, promoting technology transfer and ecosystem protection. Now this is what the Greens have been on about for years. We have been teaching prosperity without growth. So please, let's follow these 12 steps and make our vision for a sustainable future a reality. Today we're going to look at some ways in which we can achieve this at a practical level here locally in McKellar. When Mona Vale Hospital was built in 1964, the planners imagined that it would serve the growing community for decades to come. After all, Mona Vale's a long way from the city and there's a lot of traffic if you're going into Sydney, especially if you're having an emergency or if you're a woman having a baby. So to consider closing down the maternity ward or phasing out the emergency services is just such a mistake. This area still has just three roads connecting it, no rail and a tiny ferry service. This hospital services a population of a quarter of a million people and helps with 700 births a year. In summer, the visiting beach crowd swells the population and the emergency admissions rise. To make matters worse, the distances are huge making that trip to hospital in Sydney potentially life-threatening. Sure, we do need a level five hospital nearby, but not if we close down the services of Mona Vale Hospital and also Manly Hospital. Can you imagine what the traffic would look like if all services moved to French's Forest? Manly Hospital services a population of three quarters of a million people. And that would mean that one hospital was looking after more than a million. The Greens want to see shorter distances travelled and better access for hospital users and for those who support them. Hospitals are important centres for providing community and complementary health services. Hospitals also support local employment and local vocational training. So I'll fight to keep the emergency and the maternity facilities open here at Mayanaval Hospital and in fact in all the three hospitals on the northern beaches. We've got to stop the logistical and environmental problems of people having to go to Sydney for medical services. And this is part of the Greens health policy of developing local infrastructures for the future. These Wariwood paddocks were once a market garden for the people of Sydney. Built on low lying, good soil, fresh water close by. Now the developers Meriton who have donated hundreds of thousands to the Labor government here in New South Wales want to build 16 high-rise apartment blocks here to house 600 units 
accommodating 2,000 people who will generate 6,000 car trips a day. But they couldn't have picked the worst spot because it is so low lying next to the floodplain adjacent to the Wari wetlands and itself will be subject to sea level rise in the future. The Greens, who do not accept corporate donations, oppose such unsustainable developments as this Wariwood proposal from Meriton. The rollout of the National Broadband Network is going to be vital for Australia, but it must remain in public hands, not private companies, and the Greens will work with Labor in the Senate to make sure that this great resource remains a public asset. The internet services in our electorate of McKellar are a lot worse than many other areas of Sydney. And the internet infrastructure itself for Australia is a lot worse than many other countries around the world. But in the Senate, the Greens will fight for fair and equal access to high speed internet. The opposition wants to see data communication in private hands. The Greens believe data communication is so important, it's as important as the infrastructure for roads. But I agree with our communications spokesman, Senator Ludlam, when he says long-term investment in the national broadband network should continue with priority for communities and regional areas, and it should be absolutely in public hands. We do not want to see Another repeat of the debacle that followed the privatisation of Telstra. When it comes to the issue of internet filtering, the Greens would not be supporting any compulsory internet filters because we believe this introduces censorship and this could in turn lead to the blocking of the expression of political views. Our growing electorate of McKellar really needs a university or a TAFE, an educational campus, to provide excellence in education locally. Why should young people of McKellar have to travel miles, hours every day, to get a proper education? It's bad environmentally, it's bad economically, and by the time they get home at the end of a long day in the traffic, they're too exhausted to complete their studies effectively. We have great local schools, but after finishing school, what happens next? We need local jobs, local opportunities, local post-secondary education, and ways to make travel easier, less stressful, and less energy intensive. The Greens promote integrated communities connected by integrated transport systems. These are just some of the changes that we can do at the local level, which will help with the global problems in the environment. And in the process, we'll be building a much better and a much fairer society. So the Greens are really the only party with a vision for the future. The only party that's worked out a practical path towards sustainability, prosperity without growth. So help the Greens by voting Green in the lower house and also by voting Green in the upper house because we need to have a green voice in the Senate. And that's where Lee Rhiannon comes in. So thank you for listening to me. I'm Jonathan King, the Greens candidate for the seat of McKellar.